So what are the implications of a quantum computer network? Quantum mechanics has the ability to say famously that the cat is both alive and dead. In the famous paradox of Schrodinger's cat, here we have an illustration of Schrodinger's cat. Let me explain what I mean because this is crucial for understanding. Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment, a Gedanken, devised by Austrian-Irish physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1935 in conversations with Einstein in order to disprove quantum mechanics unsuccessfully by showing how counterintuitive and illogical it was. It illustrated what he saw as the problem of quantum mechanics applied to everyday objects. And this problem is called quantum superposition, in which a quantum system such as an atom or a photon, or in this case, a cat, <laughs> can be in two places at the same time or in two different states at the same time. The prevailing theory at the time called the Copenhagen interpretation says that a quantum system remains in superposition until it interacts with or is observed by the external world, the door opening by me. When this happens, the superposition collapses into one or another of the possible definite states, dead or alive. In other words, when the cat is in the box and the poison photon is released, the cat is both alive and dead in a statistical continuum until someone, a person in the classical world, opens the door, and at that moment of the door opening, of the observer entering the picture, whatever state it's in at that second, it is either alive or dead. So aliveness or deadness depends on the presence of an observer, the door opener. If the cat survives, it remembers only being alive. Now, the explanations of certain of Einstein's experiments that are consistent with standard microscopic quantum mechanics require that macroscopic objects from the classical world, such as cats and notebooks, do not always have unique classical descriptions. The thought experiment illustrates this apparent paradox. Our intuition says that an observer cannot be in a mixture of states. Yet the cat, it seems from the thought experiment, can be in such a mixture while in the box. Does its existence in a single well-defined classical state re require an external observer? Each alternative seemed absurd to Einstein, who is becoming genuinely disturbed and upset by the recklessness of the new quantum physicists and what their theories implied. Here, writing to Schrodinger, Einstein didn't believe it at all. He didn't think it was possible and thought that Schrodinger's thought experiment proved the absurdity. This is what he said about the physicists, quantum physicists. Most of them don't know what sort of risky game they're playing with reality. He did not like this game or the implications, which led to another theory, spooky action at a distance. This really cool name for the superposition of objects very far away from each other, which in classical reality, uh, Einstein just rejected. It was another one of the predictions of his theories that he just did not like. But science and experiment proves both quantum, uh, both Schrodinger's cat and quantum entanglement, which is another name for spooky ad action at a distance, to be true. Now, Dr. Spiripula, Maria, is willing to take us right into the face of this spookiness and take a look at it. What does this mean for our culture, our politics, our Hollywood, our science fiction, and our content 50 years from now? What does she see? Some of it is already obvious to people in big business and national security. On the good side, or so it looks from here, and by here, I mean in my house, today at five, quantum computers are about to bring out enormous changes in encryption, which will make governments, corporations, and Hollywood all very happy. It essentially will make encrypted information sent over quantum computers not live long enough to hack in the Schrodinger cat kind of way. 
So that will inhibit things a lot in the fake news department. And from a content point of view, at least seems to solve the IP piracy issue. She became animated as she spoke. So what's the fake news here? Is the cat dead or alive? It's dead and alive. There's no deterministic way to say, she said. The fact of the matter is, when you're making that measurement, you can say whether it's alive or dead. But a priori, the cat is both dead and alive, quantum mechanically. If you're going to use the power of quantum mechanics in an implementation when you're in an implementation where you are both black and white in your Twitter feed, some of the people see you as black and some of the people will see you as white. So you're having multiple experiences. So wait a second, I'm all confused sitting outside by the fire. Trying to grasp the implications of this for content, imagine each of us living simulations in our own universes being anything at any moment, it was possible for me to imagine never leaving this fantastical world. So I got a little depressed. I asked Maria, are we each having these multiple experiences all on our own? Are we never going to engage with other people? She answered, it's possible. If we go down the road of multiple experiences, we might never understand what the human experience is. We might never choose to engage. And that's what we call the simulation in the matrix. I asked, that's the video game we might go into? That's the simulation. And we may go into all sorts of video games where we are one thing and then another thing. And it all can become so absorbing that we will never be the same thing. So the quantum realm of this is that you will never have the same experience twice. It will be distinct from one nanosecond to the next nanosecond if you choose to start the game. I'm very depressed by this, I told Maria, and I was. It's very depressing, she answered, which is why whoever wins this race and makes the rules, they better have the artists, the historians, and the humanists to actually think about it and what it means to humanity. We need what Socrates would call a real ruler. We need to have the ruler of which Socrates spoke. And that's the opposite of what we have, at least in the US now. And I realized why she wanted to tell me all this and wanted me to spread the word, word to filmmakers and captains of industry and artists and poets and all of you. I said, I see. And here we find ourselves now because we didn't do this in 1950. So love and entanglement are the same thing in some sense. Love is wires that are not physical. Entanglement is exactly the same thing, but wires of propagation of information that are not physical. That is why it happens simultaneously. So when information is transmitted simultaneously, it's not at the speed of light, it's simultaneous. If two protons or any bits of information are entangled, it knows what happens here, I know what happens there, immediately, like being in love. In other words, it's saying that if I'm an observer and if this person loves somebody, well then I know that the somebody is there no matter where they are. There is a love entanglement. I don't need to have the wires in between. The World Knowledge Forum.